Hi yogis, welcome to my channel. I'm Becca and this is the first video I'm making here on my new YouTube channel. So I really appreciate the support. Thanks for clicking on it. I know the title says yoga for aerialists, but you don't have to be an aerialist to do this class. It will be well suited for anybody who's tight or sore after a workout or really anybody who just wants to get a nice full body stretch. We won't be using any props in this class, but if you have some, it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep them nearby. We will begin seated. You can either sit like me on your heels or just in any comfortable position that suits you. And we'll begin stretching our neck. So drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Option to walk your left hand out to the side, tenting the fingertips. Relax your shoulders. Should be feeling in a sensation right along here. And then slowly begin to turn your head and gaze in the direction of your right shoulder. And notice how that changes the sensation in your neck. Continuing to breathe in and out through the nose. And if you would like, you can kind of flow here so you can turn your head so your gaze is facing forward as you inhale and then as you exhale, turn your neck and your gaze in the direction of your right shoulder. Inhale, exhale, and take it or leave it. You can always just hold in one position. And take about one more full round of breath. And then slowly bring your neck back to center. And we'll switch sides, so left ear towards left shoulder. And then walk your right fingertips out. And again, you can turn your chin towards your left shoulder. And one side might feel totally different than the other. It's pretty normal. We all have a dominant side. And if you would like to do that little flow by turning your neck, gazing forward, and then back down about three times. Take one more full round of breath wherever you are. Then slowly and gently lift the head back up. And we'll take some half moon circles with our neck as our last little warm up for it. So let's drop our right ear towards our right shoulder. Inhale, tuck the chin and gently roll the neck until left ear meets left shoulder. If you would like to kind of Gaze up a little bit, you can. Just be very gentle on the neck here. We're all gonna feel this a little different. Then inhale, tuck the chin, go to the other side. You can just let your hands rest on your lap or anywhere that feels good. Do this a couple more times, inhale. Exhale. And then we'll all meet on the left side before lifting our chin back up. And I'm just gonna turn to this side so you guys can see what I'm doing. For our next pose, we'll sit staggering our right shin in front of our left shin. So both of our legs are making contact with the mat, our sitting bones are grounded, 
Inhale, lengthen the spine as you walk your hands forward. And then as you exhale, begin to lower down. You can rest on the forearms or you can make a little pillow for your forehead and rest it down. Wherever you can relax, we don't want to be forcing ourselves to go lower than we can. It does us no good. You want to be able to take full breaths in whichever shape you're in. So it doesn't matter how far you're folded down, you should be feeling this in the right glute into the outer right thigh. And we'll be here for about five breaths. Relaxing our upper body just as much as our lower body. After your final exhale, use your hands to push into the mat. Help yourself rise up. Bring your hands behind you. Kiss your shoulder blades together, puff up your chest, open the heart, inhale, exhale. Let's switch the cross of our shins. So now our left shin will be staggered in front of our right shin. And same thing, walk your hands out, lengthen through the spine, inhale, and then as you exhale, lower down. Your shapes are going to look different than my shapes. It's not about how the pose looks necessarily. It's about how you feel in it. And especially when we are focusing on recovering after an intense workout, we really just want to let our breath guide us and not force ourselves deep down into a pose. So take about two more breaths right where we are. And after your final exhale again, push into the ground. Bring your hands behind you. Kiss the shoulder blades. Puff open your chest. Inhale, exhale, let's straighten our legs, leave about two fists um, of a distance between your ankles, it's about hip width distance, Moving into staff pose, bring your hands down by your sides. Lengthen through the spine as you try to keep your palms connected to the mats. And then here, let's inhale, reach our arms up. And we're going to fold over our legs, coming into caterpillar pose. And this is a passive forward fold. So it's okay to let the spine roll. <laughs> Excuse me, let the spine round. You can tuck the chin slightly and it will give you a little bit more of a sensation along the spine. And it is okay here to have a bend in the knees if hamstrings are really tight. Do your best not to push or pull. And if you would like to add on to this, you can reach your hands on your feet so your toes are making a connection to your wrists. 
And then begin to point your foot. So I'm starting with my right foot, keeping the connection of my wrists and my toes. I'm pointing my foot. It's giving a nice sensation in the shoulder and even the lat. Switch to the left side. And as you're doing this, you'll notice that your legs are stretching out as well in your hamstrings. But really, we want to try to get the sensation in our shoulders. So about one more time on each side. And then release that. Let yourself rise up. Bring my left knee into my chest. Cross it over my leg. Hug my right arm around. Left arm reaches back behind me. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to twist. Squeezing my left knee in towards my chest. One more full round of breath. Exhale, come forward. And then reach for your left foot with both hands and see if you can extend it. It doesn't have to be straight. You can keep a bend if you so choose. Keeping the spine straight, chest is nice and broad. And then release and try to lower with control. And we'll switch sides. <clears throat> so bring your right knee in, cross it over your leg. Left arm is going to hug your right knee into your chest. And your other arm reaches behind you. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to twist and relax into this pose. One more full round of breath here. And then as you exhale, slowly unwind. Reach for your right foot with both hands. Straighten your leg as much as you can. Straight spine. And release the foot and lower with control. Feel free to shake it out. And then let's cross at the ankles. Come into tabletop pose. So stacking shoulders over wrists. Hips over knees, spread the fingertips, fingers nice and wide, press into the fingertips. And we'll take thread the needle. So inhale, extend your left arm up. Exhale, thread it underneath your right armpit. And then let your arm rest down, bringing your cheek down as well. Do your best to keep your hips stacked over your knees, so you may have to slightly send them over to the left. And then your right arm can either be pressing into the mat like this, or you can extend it up overhead. Mm. You can activate your ujjayi breath. For those of you who don't know, ujjayi breath is a breathing technique where you breathe in and out through the nose with a slight constriction in the back of the throat. So you sound a little bit like Darth Vader, very, very, very faint. Or it can also mimic a little bit of an ocean sound. So take one more 
full round of breath here. Then your right arm is going to slide back down if it was extended overhead. Push into the mat. Inhale, extend your left arm up. Open one last time. Exhale, bring it back down. And let's switch sides. So inhale, reach your right arm up. Exhale, thread it underneath your left underarm. And again, slightly send your hips to the right just to keep them stacked over your knees. You can choose what you're going to do with this left arm. And when you are doing ujjayi breath, you can play around slightly with the sensation and the constriction in the back of your throat. Notice that when you constrict a little bit harder, the sound that you're hearing grows louder. When you soften the throat, the ujjayi sound softens a little bit as well. Just find a nice happy medium this breath is meant to distract the mind and warm the body. And it's totally optional. Take one more inhale. Exhale, slide your arm back down if it was overhead. Press into the mat. Inhale, extend your right arm up. Exhale, everything comes back down to the mat. Realign yourself in tabletop pose. We'll take some cat and cow here. So inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the spine, push the floor away. Lengthen your tailbone down. Inhale, cat. Or excuse me, cow. <laughs> Exhale, cat. I tend to confuse these sometimes. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cats. Then we're going to add on. So inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And then push back, stretching the low back. We're not going to rest here. Inhale, back up. Cow pose. Exhale, cat, and push back. You're sending your hips towards your heels, but we're not resting. Inhale, up, cow. Exhale, push it back. Tuck the chin in as you do this as well. Continue this for three more times. Going at your own rate, matching breath to movement. One last time. And we meet in tabletop pose. Extend your right leg behind you so you're standing so you're resting on the ball of your right foot and then press your heel down. You should be getting a nice stretch in the calf. And then the left leg is going to, the left calf is going to come out kind of like a kickstand on the side of the mat. And then you're going to bring your right heel down. Lifting your right arm up, bringing bicep along the ear. This variation of side plank with a side stretch. Neck should stay in line with the spine, but it's okay if it drops a little bit. Lengthen your chest, open towards the ceiling. And then press into the outer edge of your right foot too. 
Inhale. Exhale. Bring your hand back down to the mat. Realign in tabletop pose. And we'll do this on the other side. So extend your left leg, resting on the ball of the foot, and press your heel back. Ooh, this side is a lot more intense for me. <laughs> and then the right leg is going to come out like a kickstand. I'm going to drop my left heel, rising up, bringing my bicep along the ear, twisting towards the ceiling, opening my chest. Pressing into the outer edge of my left foot. Inhale. Exhale, circle your arm back down on the mat. And realign in tabletop pose. And then tuck your toes and come to sit on your heels. If that's too intense, keep your hands on the mat and then you can control how much weight you let into your feet. But if this feels okay, you can rise up. If the pinky toes are poking out, just tuck them in with the rest of your toes. We're going to be here for about 10 breaths. We're going to add a shoulder stretch, some eagle arms. So bring your arms out to the side in a T, and your left arm is going to cross underneath your right arm. And you can just bring your back of your palms to touch, or if you would like and you have the flexibility, you can bring your palms to touch. So either one works. If this just isn't working for you at all, just go ahead and give yourself a hug. So find whichever variation works for you. If you are doing eagle arms, lift your elbows so they're in line with your shoulders. Press your hands in towards one another and tuck the chin. If you're giving yourself a hug, just tuck the chin in and let your spine round. And we'll release this slowly. If your feet are killing you, you can <clears throat> take a break for a second, kind of shake it out, or you can simply pause the video, take a break, come back when you're ready, and we'll do the other side. So arms come out to a T. This time, right arm is going to come under left arm, and you can simply cross once or twice, depending on your flexibility. Elbows in line with the shoulders. Push your hands in towards one another. Tuck the chin. And you should be feeling a really nice stretch between the backs of your shoulder blades, back of the neck, maybe even a little bit into your arms. One more full round of breath here. And slowly release. Okay, bring your hands onto the mat. Untuck the toes. Sit back on your heels. And to counter that, just bring your hands behind you like we were doing earlier in class. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, puff up the chest, and then as much as you would like, you can just kind of lift the knees up until you feel sensation in the front of the foot. You can always lift the hands, 
but only do this if you are familiar with this position. If you are an aerialist, you tend to have very open feet. But really listen to your body here. Not everyone is going to be comfortable lifting their hands. And then lower your knees back down. Walk out in tabletop pose if you would like to kind of shake it out. Awesome. All right, let's set up for downward facing dog. Hands are shoulder width distance, spreading fingers nice and wide. Tuck the toes behind you. Let's start in our plank pose. And then from here, lift the hips up and back. Your heels do not have to touch the mat. Pedal out the feet. They're either hip width distance or wider. Press into your pointer finger and your thumb to help support your wrist. Relax the neck. You can shake it, yes. And then whenever you're ready, find some stillness. The navel is slightly sucking in and up. Very, very slightly. And from here, extend your right leg up and back, bend the knee, open the hip. Do your best to keep your shoulders square to the mat. They tend to want to rotate in this position. And see here, if now you can take your left heel and touch it towards the mat. If not, it's okay. And then inhale, straighten your hips, bring your right knee through. Lower your back heel, excuse me, your, black, your back knee to the mat. If you would like to stay here with your hands on the mat, you can. If the mat's too far, this is a great place to incorporate some blocks. Something to raise the ground for you. Real important here, you want your knee either directly over your ankle or a little bit behind it. We just don't want it going over. All right, press into your legs. Reach your arms up above your head. Let's take a side stretch here. So I'm going to grab onto my left wrist. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And then exhale, I'm going to side bend over to the right. Keeping the integrity in my legs. Inhale up. Exhale, bring your hands down to the mat. Okay, place your left hand on the mat. Your right arm is going to reach up and back, reaching for your foot, coming into a quad stretch. If this is too much, just stay in the low lunge. Press your foot into your hand and feel how that helps open up the chest a little bit more. And again, our hips are sinking down towards the mat. A lot going on here. Relax the neck and the jaw as well. We don't want to create any unnecessary tension. One more full round of breath. And slowly release the foot. No sling flat, slingshot action. Bring your hands to frame your front foot and begin straightening your right leg. Your hips are squared here, so both hip bones are facing forward. Option to stay up here for your half splits, or you can sit all the way back on your left heel, and then let your torso fold over your leg. Again, you can keep a bend in this knee if you need. Mm -hmm. 
but let yourself relax here. Your spine, your spine can round. Tuck the chin. To come out of this one, use the strength of your left leg and your hands to help push you up. Bring your hands on the mat in front of you, shoulder width distance, tuck your left toes under, three leg down dog. And bring your foot back down. Before we go to the other side, let's just reset in our downward facing dog. Let's take a cleansing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's take one more. And these cleansing breaths are always here for you. Help reset your energy, clear the mind, release any pent up energy. So, Let's go to the other side. Inhale, extend your left leg up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip. Keep your shoulders as square to the mat as you can. And then press and see if your right heel can touch the mat, just for a second. And then inhale, straighten and square your hips. Your left leg is gonna come through between your hands. Lower your back knee towards the mat. Let's just stay down here for a moment. Utilize any blocks you have if the floor is too far away for you. And again here, I forgot to mention on the first side, but really want to be engaging our pelvic floor here. So as I'm about to remove my hands from the floor and lift up. That's when I really want to depend on my pelvic floor muscles to help keep that lift in my hips. Lengthening my tailbone down towards the mat, engaging the core and then allowing myself to stretch from here. Keeping the integrity in the pelvis and the hips. And again, you want to keep your knee over your ankle or a little behind. Let's take that side stretch. So grab your right wrist with your left hand, lengthen the spine as you inhale. Exhale, side stretch over to the left. Inhale up. Exhale, bring your hands to the mat. Place your right hand down, left arm reaches up and back for your foot. And again, you want to keep your hips down nice and low. We're not lifting so we can grab our foot. Want to keep our alignment correct and then reaching for our foot is just an added bonus. One more full round of breath here. Remember, push your foot into your hand. It opens the chest very nicely. And exhale, slowly release that hand. No sling sh slingshot action. I cannot say that word. And let's find our half split. So straighten your left leg. Flex the toes towards your face. Option to stay up here, keeping your hips nice and squared, both of them facing the front. Or if you did it on the first side, just sit back on your heel and let your spine round. And it is totally normal to have asymmetry in your body. So if you are experiencing a lot of that, just know it's normal. We all have a dominant side, especially 
if you are an aerialist or an athlete, we tend to favor whichever side we're stronger on. But in yoga, it's very important not to not to favor one side over the other. We always want to practice balance. So even if you don't feel the stretch as much, it's still good to breathe through it. So to exit out of this, using the strength of your right leg and your hands, push up. Bring your hands in front of you, shoulder width distance, tuck your right toes, three leg down dog. Inhale, exhale, your feet come to meet each other. And from this downward facing dog, let's walk our hands, our feet up to meet our hands. And there hip width distance or a little wider. You can even walk them out to the edges of the mat if you would like. Bend the knees slightly, grab for opposite elbows and let the head hang. Get some traction in the neck. You can always sway from side to side if you would like. And find stillness. Bring your hands back on the mat, lift up halfway. And then walk your feet so they're hip width distance. If they were out a little bit further. Place your left hand in the center of your feet under your shoulder. Bend into your left knee. The right knee is straight. And then you're going to twist. The right arm goes up towards the ceiling. Only look up if it feels okay on the neck. If the neck is experiencing tension, we don't want to make that worse. So just gaze down if that is the case. And if you have the shoulder flexibility, your top arm, you can find a bind by wrapping your arm around and placing your hand in the crease of your thigh. You should be feeling a nice sensation on the outside of your right leg, your IT band. And then if you have that bind, just untwist. And we'll do it on the other side. So replace your left hand with your right hand under your shoulder in the center of your feet. Bend into your right knee this time. Left leg is straight. Left arm reaches up. And again, if you took that bind, bend the elbow and place your hand in the crease of your thigh. Again, be aware of your neck. If it's too much, just gaze down. If you had that bind, undo it and we'll unwind, come back through center. And from here, let's just step back into our downward facing dog. And from here, we'll find our plank pose and just lower all the way down to your belly. Bring your hands off of the mat, tenting your fingers. So you have like almost like these claw arms. Place your forehead on the mat. And just by doing this, you might be feeling a stretch in your pectorals and your chest. We're going to intensify that. So pressing into your feet and your fingertips. Inhale, curl your chest up. 
Exhale, come back down. Forehead to mat. Inhale. Exhale, one more time, going at your own pace. And then slowly release your arms. Make a little pillow for your forehead just for a moment as we neutralize the spine. And then we'll rise up coming into our sphinx, our sphinx pose. So forearms are on the mat in front of you. Tops of the feet are making connection with the mat. Pelvis is in contact with the mat. And as if you're trying to launch yourself forward, pull your elbows back towards you, broadening the chest. We're gonna come into a little bit of a side sphinx. So your left forearm is gonna come to a side, to the side on an angle. Your right fingertips are gonna come by your right ribs, working as kind of a kickstand. And then with both hip bones still in contact with the mat, begin to twist and gaze over your right shoulder. And if you'd like to add on, you can bend your right leg and then grab onto the back of the foot. But if you're feeling any pinching in the low back, then just kind of leave this part out and stick with the side sphinx only. Pressing your heel in towards your glutes. Lengthen the tailbone. And then we're gonna release this slowly by straightening the leg. And we'll reset in our sphinx. So this time the right arm is going to come to an angle. Left fingertips are going to come by our left ribs, working as a kickstand, keeping the hips in contact with the mat. Twist, gaze over your left shoulder. Being aware of any pinching in the low back, begin to bend your left knee and maybe reach for it with your hand. Again, being aware not to dump all your weight into the shoulder that's supporting you. We want to be stable. And to release this, gently begin to straighten your leg. Untwist, coming back into our Sphinx Pose. Let's lower onto our mat. Coming into another chest opener. So bring your arms out to a T. And we will do our right side first. So bend your right arm. So elbow and shoulder are roughly in one line. And begin to roll on your right side. And then bend the knees and stack your hips one on top of the other. Your left arm can kind of work as a support kickstand. The opening in the right side of your chest can be pretty intense, so don't just dump your weight and roll over. You want to really be aware of how much pressure you're putting. And then slowly straighten your legs and untwist, roll back onto your belly to come out of this one. 
and we'll take it to the other side. So left arm bends, left elbow and shoulder are roughly in one line. Begin turning and bending the knees, stacking your hips on top of one another. I know for me, this side is a lot less intense. And I often want to just completely abandon it, abandon it and focus on my right side, which is just so much more intense when I do this pose. And it's just a reminder for me to practice balance. And it's a reminder that it's not about the pose. It's about how you feel in the pose. And begin to straighten your legs and gently roll back onto your belly. And let's lift up and just come into a child's pose. So bring your big toes to touch. Knees go as wide as you would like. The wider they are, the more intense this will feel. Walk your hands out in front of you. And then the goal is to send your hips towards your heels and hopefully be able to rest them, rest your hips on your heels. But if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. Just do your best. And you can always support yourself by putting a pillow or a blanket underneath the hips if you're not able to make the connection yet. Relax the shoulders, relax the upper body, let yourself feel heavy. If you'd like to add on to a, add on a shoulder stretch, bend the elbows, connect the palms, coming into a reverse namaste. And release that whenever you're ready to come out of this. We'll press into the mat. Walk yourself up. And we'll meet on our back. So however you'd like to get there. Make your way onto your back. And when you get there, extend your arms above your head. Legs extend, full body stretch. And then let's bend our knees, bring the soles of our feet onto the mat. Let's find bridge pose. So press your heels into the mat, engage the core, lift the hip. And if you'd like here, you can walk your hands in towards one another. Walk the shoulder blades in, puff up the chest, get a little more lift. Option to come onto the balls of the feet. Help lengthen the lower back a little bit. Also option to just keep the heels down. One more inhale. Exhale, release the hands and lower everything back down. Coming into recline pigeon. Cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee. And then inhale, hug your right knee into your chest and Bring your hands through so you can interlace them behind the thigh or on the shin, wherever you find most comfortable. Keep your left foot flexed. 
to help protect the knee. Soften the shoulders, the neck, the upper body. We're focusing on the lower body now. If you'd like to add on a little bit by adding a hamstring stretch, go ahead and straighten your right leg and you can reach for your shin. Bring it in. Notice if your tailbone lifts off the mat as you do this. The goal is to keep it as grounded as possible. Same with the shoulders. And to come out of this, begin to bend your right knee if it was straight. Bring your foot onto the mat. And then we're going to just over cross. So now we're crossing at the knees and then hug them into the chest. And you can either just hold on to the knees and hug them in this way, or you can reach for the feet and drag them down and away from one another. So your arms are a little active here. And then release this. Bring your right foot back on the mat. Your left leg is still crossed over. Press into your right foot, lift your hips and shift them over to the right. And then tee your arms out to the side and let your knees drop over to the left. Do your best to keep your right shoulder in contact with the mat. So we're twisting from the mid spine. And if having your legs crossed is a little bit too intense, you can always just uncross them and stack one leg on top of the other. Three full rounds of breath here. And then slowly, slowly engage the core and begin to lift the knees up through center. Uncross your left knee. Recenter your hips and your shoulders with one another. And we'll find that bridge pose again. So press into your feet, lift your tailbone, engage the core. Interlace your hands underneath your tailbone. Walk your shoulder blades in towards one another. Puff up the chest. Again, if you'd like to stand on the heat on the balls of your feet, lifting your heels helps elongate your lower back. One more full round of breath. Drop your heels, slowly bring your hips back down. And we'll do that same sequence on the other side. So now crossing your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Inhale, hug your left knee into your chest. Interlace your hands behind your thigh. And squeeze it in. Oh, hi, Pandora. And do some yoga. Embrace the sensation. It might be feeling very different than the first side. 
Remember to flex your right foot as much as you can. <laughs> and again, if you want to go for that hamstring stretch, straighten your leg and then reach for the shin or the knee, wherever is accessible to you without lifting your tailbone or your shoulders too much off of the mat. Doing yoga with cats is very interesting. I'm very surprised it took her this long to come and interrupt the video. One more full round of breath. And then slowly release that, bring it all back down. So crossing your right leg all the way over, press into your left foot to lift and shift your hips over to the left. Tee out your arms to the side, drop your knees over to the right. Do your best to keep your left shoulder grounded on the mat. And if you need to abandon the cross of the legs, please do so and just stack one on top of the other. Make it work for you. I just realized I forgot to do the um, pose before this. So after this twist, we will go back. So engage the core, bring your knees back through center, press into your left foot to bring your hips back in line. And then from here, let's hug our knees into our chest, keeping them crossed. This is what I forgot to do. Um, so either, Pandora. So either hugging the knees in from here or reaching for the feet and pulling them down and away from you. I think I got a little distracted because of my furry friend right here, <laughs> but it's okay. We're just doing one stretch out of order. So your arms are a little bit active here if you're holding onto the feet, pulling them down and away. One more breath. After your exhale, Bring it all down and uncross. And from here, let's bring our feet out towards the edges of the mat. Let our knees fall in towards one another. Arms can relax out to the side, palms facing up. Just neutralize the spine for a moment. And inhale, hug the knees into the chest. And relax your right foot down towards the mat. Let the knee fall open towards the side. And then reach for the outer edge of your left foot which, with your hand and see if you can straighten the leg a little bit, almost as if you're trying to step on the ceiling. Coming into a half happy baby pose. Option to sway from side to side a little bit. Or you can just stay still. The right knee out to the side like this is working as a little bit of a counterweight so we don't just roll all the way towards the left. And then let's release that and switch sides. So the left knee is gonna kind of just flop out towards the side, reach for the outer edge of your right foot, and then step on the ceiling. 
and you're drawing your knee down towards your armpit. Either sway or find stillness. And then instead of bringing your right foot back down, we're just going to lift the left leg, reach for the outer edge of the foot, and open it up. Lengthening the tailbone down towards the mat as much as you can, relaxing the shoulders. If you don't want to reach on the feet and hold on, you can always just reach for behind the thighs and let the shins flop down over your hands. Honestly, it's the same exact stretch, just a little bit easier. One more full round of breath. And then release the pose into our final Shavasana. <laughs> I'm going to take my Shavasana with my kitty. So find some length on your mat let yourself feel heavy and supported let go of any and all breath control Allow yourself this time here to reset, to let the goodness of your practice soak in. I'm going to leave you here to rest in Shavasana. Please stay here as long as you need. Namaste.